Welcome everyone. Today we are gathered to complete our work in the cycle of Aries. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that total solar eclipse, whoever was able to in the US area. I don't know about the other countries, um, but it was pretty spectacular. Um, but today we're going to to finish our concentration and focus uh, on the theme of uh, new leadership and governance, cleaning the house of religion and politics, which coincides with the Cardinal Cross. Um, our topic is leadership of soul, power through balance. And through this topic, we have been meditating and pondering and sharing over the last few weeks, uh, especially on the questions that were posited at the time of the full moon to us and during that invocation. Today, we will bring our final seed thoughts, gather them together for humanity and express them through evocation, along with the energies that are assisting us during this new moon. At this time, let us sound our statement of purpose. Over to you, Brigitte. Thank you, Tracy. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and cherish diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an asramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. And let us do our naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Brigitte. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into our group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers. And as your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. 
Hello, uh, friends. Uh, this is Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, in the United States. Welcome. Brigitte. Greetings. This is Birgitte Rasmussen calling in from Slaelse in Denmark. Welcome. Anne. Blessings to everybody. This is Anne Parker from Los Angeles, California in the United States. Welcome. Annette. Annette says, I am Annette from Soro, Denmark. She can't get her microphone to work, but she definitely wrote in the chat to us. So welcome, Annette. Barbara. Barbara, please unmute yourself if you're able to. Welcome, Barbara. Jillian. Hello, everyone. It's uh, Jill here from Norfolk, UK. Welcome. Helen. Hello, this is Helen, also from the UK, uh, Hertfordshire, near London. Welcome. Judy. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Judy from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Lynn. Um, hi to everyone. This is Lynn Green from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Welcome. Martine. Hello, everyone. This is Martine calling in from Belgium, Châteauneuf. Welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Well, the time has come now as our work starts, begins to culminate today. So it's time uh, to open the space for our whole group sharing so that we can uh, express the impressions and insights that we've gathered and continue to gather through this process. We'll go ahead now and put the questions up that were given at the opening or at the full moon time. And I can read them uh, as we look at them. First question is, what is the essence of leadership of soul? And how can we recognize it in the world and in our daily lives. What is the essence of leadership of soul? And how can we recognize it in the world as well as our daily lives?
The second question, what is needed? What is the needed next step in group life and in humanity to express power through balance? What is the next step in group life as well as humanity to express power through balance? In Leadership of Soul, our third question, what is the difference between power and power through balance? Is balance always needed? In Leadership of Soul, what is the difference between power and power through balance? And is balance always needed? As we begin our sharing today, please, when you're ready, unmute yourself and express yourself and then possibly wait a few moments after the first person expresses themselves for the next one to also chime in. So let's begin. Thank you. Also, Alexander has put up in the chat box the Community Impressions Board link. So if anyone uh, would like to uh, click on that and look at what's been shared there, you can do so by clicking onto that link now if you'd like. Hi, Jill here. I've uh, written, jotted a few things down. I tend to be a person of few words, or perhaps it's just a few ideas. But anyway, I'll put for question one, there should be no separateness, nationalism, and instead there should be cooperation between all participants in any group, including nations. Number two, if the soul is used to express through, there would be just love and no problems. And three, power can be one-sided. Therefore, one side is usually considered more important than the other. Balance respects all views. Thank you.
regards the second question I put this last week or so I had a, a, a sense of, of considerable urgency that humanity and especially the, the new group it's, Helen, excuse me, your sound is not very clear. Can you get closer to the microphone? Sorry. Putting that thing at the top down there now. I bet you can hear me now, yes? Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, with it, it regards question two, I, I've i had a sense this, this past maybe two two weeks, a, a sense of urgency in expressing um, the soul, the, the humanity, and especially the new group in humanity, um, needs um, to be active in, in expressing the soul in radiation in everyday life. And at times sort of hiding back and being more esoteric is, is not so at the moment. It needs to be radiated, expressed, and seen out there in the world. I think I'll hop on the coattails of Helen and continue the conversation of the first question. What is the essence of leadership of soul? In the essence of the soul, or if the soul is leading, of course, would be love. That would be the essence. And how we can recognize it in the world are those that show compassion, kindness, patience, and all the qualities that come, heart qualities that come through with, uh, with the soul. So I, I've been contemplating a lot on the essence of love, which is not easy <laughs> because there's, I, I mean, we, I really don't know, but I'm starting to feel what's coming to me is that love is a force behind the thing or anything. So the essence to me would be the force, the cosmic force of love that emanates from the one. And being sons and daughters of the one, our essence also, our natural essence, would be emanating the force of love through everything we are, who we are, what we do, um, thoughts, words, action, and deed. Um, and boy, would that change the world in a split second. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I I will also add to what uh, Tracy said that um, really love is an energy and that uh, unites all beings together, and in that way we could build the brotherhood of man. And um, building right relationships and constructing together a better world. In everyday life, I see that uh, here in Europe, NGOs are working more together than in the past. And people um, are coming more in um, communities to try to build 
kind of life together, which is uh, sustainable and letting love speak more than before. Thank you. Hello, this is Judy. Uh, one of the things that uh, is stated in the Blue Books is that the soul is group conscious. And I've always pondered on that and exactly what it means. And uh, when we look at this topic of leadership, um, it becomes clearer to me that the soul is about relationship and so is leadership. Um, so to be a good leader, one has to be group conscious. One has to be uh, aware, not of the self, but of all selves uh, that one is participating with. Uh, it really connects with the idea of being a server. I think a, a true leader uh, serves the common good. And uh, sometimes there um, are conflicts within what is the common good, but it needs to be based on uh, the idea of principles and what works best for the majority. So uh, if one comes from uh, the aspect of soul, um, then one works in a group conscious way. Thank you. Hi, this is this is Lynn. Um, my meditation on these questions has still, again, led me in a, in that different direction. Um, and Judy, I knew you would take care of the more human social aspect of things, so I, I let my meditation go where it wanted, and I kind of followed along with you, Helen, a bit. And um, I actually. Uh, um, well, I've got <laughs> several things came through. Um, first of all, I think I'm going to just thank everybody who meditated for the um, um, eclipse in for the U.S., for the United States, that um, it was, the, the results were amazing. Um, I'm in, I was in the eclipse path and um, drove a little farther north from our home, and there we were. Um, and the energy was exceptional. The love was exceptional. And um, people we passed, you know, were, of course, <laughs> jubilant, jubilant. And um, we weren't in a large group or anything, but we had people driving past where we were, uh, saying wonderful things <laughs> out their windows. Um, anyway, um, that was a good experience, I think, of group life, as you said, Judy. Um, and and as what you were saying, Tracy, the effect of that love was incredible. And, and everyone that everyone could kind of focus on the one event at the same time um, raised the whole energy level tremendously it seemed to me. Um, and that kind of was in line with what I was thinking earlier um, after our last session. Um, the next day, the next morning, I had sort of a big download. And, and I was thinking of how I could put it in the, uh, the chat box. And 
I thought, how can I have all those words? And it came to me, why don't, don't, why don't I do an experiment and just see how much I can transmute, transmit to all of you to, telepathically? So anyway, I've been busy trying to uh, be telepathic and send telepathic thoughts. And, um, but it seems to me that um, that's a next step um, in, in, for humanity and in using power. And it's what we're doing. We're seeding, uh, seeding the atmosphere with telepathic thoughts um, for the world. Um, so, but then uh, along another line, um, I keep seemingly to be in touch with um, the lower kingdoms lately for some reason, um, even more and more because now I've had another another input from um, the animal kingdom, it seems like. Uh, it just seems when we talk about balance, and last time we got together, we talked about compassion a great deal. We have to, we really have to take into account the lower kingdoms and um, and the factor of time and um, and not only for them um, and for the earth as a whole to, to move forward, but for humanity, because we're asking humanity to take big steps through our seeding of thoughts. But um, we are built of, of course, you know, of substance from all of the kingdoms and we're asking people who maybe aren't yet self-aware uh, as much as we would like to step into this new world also. And um, so the lower kingdoms within all of us, within our human experience, have to be raised also. And um, I think that's part of this big balance question. And it's certainly a part of compassion. Um, In fact, um, in fact, uh, I think I had uh, an experience earlier in the week. Um, I uh, was watching television and um, was watching the local public TV station, and they had a show on the plight of farmers. And this is where I was thinking maybe in line with you, Helen, because I thought, I mean, it was so sad what's happening to far, small farmers in this country. Um, they're just being wiped out in horrible, sad, you know, depressing ways. The, the suicide rate is twice as high for farmers as it is for other people in this country. Um, they're just losing family farms that have been in the family for a hundred years. They're losing their livelihood. They're losing what they love to do. But anyway, um, that's, that's what the show was about. And I don't think it was a coincidence because what came to me later was something that we might, I don't know, you folks will have to tell me what you think, but one thing we might try to do that might be more specific uh, would be, to visualize, say, a plan like um, local, a grassroots uh, rising of local organizations in, local, in small communities um, to support um, the farmers around them. If there could be some sort of um, coming together of people in these uh, small communities to support one another and to support their neighbors who have been raising their food for forever, um, they might be able to organize and help one another and not be totally swallowed up by the, um, by the factory farms. And I know the factory farms have served a good purpose and still do because it's, um, they've gotten rid of a lot of hunger that uh, wasn't possible before because they raised so much, so much. But um, anyway, I, I think we're going to have to have this, the small farmers. Eventually, I think that's going to have to be the way to go. Who knows for sure, but at least we have to take that into consideration. And it certainly has a place now if um, we can support one another. Um, 
and I think that could move that could move on to our goal of um, people around the world being fed. I mean, eventually it could tie right into that if a movement were started to help on the local level. And this is probably being done in some way already. I'm not sure, but um, maybe our our uh, meditation could increase the the energy of that or increase the influence or the uh, power of that movement. And, um, and eventually, I think it could end up with, um, you know, erasing a whole lot of hunger down the road, which is certainly um, one of our goals, uh, a UN goal, as Judy has said, um, erasing world hunger. Um, you know, when you think of all the countries in Africa, say, or in other countries like, or other continents like India and countries and continents, and um, where, um, and I'm not good at specifics, but I know there are places where um, they, re they really need the uh, local people to um, feed everyone. Um, and that could eventually uh, finally start in some broader way, uh, maybe eventually could bring in um, a more awareness of, say, the animal kingdom and how to rightly treat animals and get away so much from the factory ideas of um, slaughter and, you know, maybe we could, maybe it could all tumble together as it is in my mind um, into something that down the road could have an enormous effect just from trying to maybe um, give some power and energy to um, locally um, um, having groups to locally support uh, farmers in their area, in their communities. Um, if we could help energize that, I can't see the downside of it, although there always is some, and when human beings get involved, there's always, I know, some downside. Something in the material world doesn't quite work. But I don't know. Um, it's just, those are some thoughts I have. And um, we talk about power through balance. Um, that seems to be addressing that to me. Um, and we don't want to be, you know, we don't want anyone telling anyone else what to do. We're talking about uh, cooperation and uh, working together, uh, recognizing and honoring one another's opinions. It seems like um, these small groups at a local level would have the opportunity to do that in a way that large governments and so forth have trouble doing. Um, okay, that's a lot, but that's what I've got for now. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, Martine, uh, I believe, wanted to share also, so... Martine, please unmute yourself. Yes, I've already shared. Um, maybe in daily life, we could try to work on non-separativeness. Um, and I'm, uh, I want here to share something also. Um, I'm very glad to um, that um, Alexander. Sorry, I'm a bit. <laughs> um, I'm very glad that Alexander has had the initiative with uh, other person, of course, of the of several groups to uh, initiate this uh, meeting and, uh, and coming together. And I think that's what one step. I don't know if it is the next step, but I think it is the next step for our groups to come together and to unite and uh, clear uh, the space of uh, separativeness if there is in some corners. And uh, that's what I'm going to share. <laughs> but I've already shared about love, Tracy. Thank you very much.
Yeah, I'd like to add to that <clears throat> the power and as opposed to power through balance. And when Lynn was speaking, it uh, brought to mind that we're in a very unique place right now, humanity is, um, because we are starting to work through our mind as opposed to our emotion. Um, we've, we're still dealing with emotion, of course, but we've had, we've been around, humanity's been around for a long time. And we've actually have the ability now to look back in time at the way power has been used for good or abused for bad, um, all throughout the ages. And we're moving now into a time when we are separating, hopefully separating that um, emotional body, the Kama Manas, uh, and elevating it to the higher Manas, to the mind, and using that to truly um, be the observer, step outside ourselves, and actually look and see the difference between all the ways that power has been used throughout the times and take the good from each era and, and use that and discard that which is bad and from the good build new from it because a lot of times you can't build on old things. Sometimes you have to start fresh and new and I almost feel like during this time period, especially with all these eclipses happening and these powerful um, planetary alignments, um, it's time we're awakening our mind. We're awakening as, you know, children of the sun, so to speak. And it's time to now observe and look at everything that we've done, look, look behind us what we've done, look ahead of us as to what we would like to see happen and live in the moment creating everything in that moment uh, because of course time is irrelevant you know it's past present future is all happening at the same time so and that would balance the power also thank you It still remains a, somewhat an enigma for me, this phrase, power through balance. And um, I keep meditating on it. And it uh, just occurred to me as I was listening that uh, in a way, this formula could be related to... Um, what Judy, you referred to yesterday, uh, individual, the presence of Uranus as hierarchical ruler in areas, the sign that gives the impulse uh, to go into incarnation, to seek experience. And Uranus being present in Libra as a esoteric ruler on the level of soul. And Libra is a sign of reorientation, a sign where actually I said in the books that after eons of uh, uh, many, many lives, the soul comes to uh, that moment of turning on evolutionary path where experiencing being thought on the physical plane and where it was the it's uh, the, the priority and the main task of the soul to gain those experiences and take control uh, uh, over the material plane towards the evolutionary path where uh, 
we start the journey back home where we actually relinquish the mutable experiences and we get into the uh, path long journey back home to back to father's home and if think in a much larger scale about our time if we can go through this tremendous pain and horror and just see that this is the time where a huge number of souls making that turn, achieving balance and finding inner power to make that turn on the evolutionary path. I've been reading esoteric astrology, uh, sorry, esoteric healing uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, Chua Ku continuously emphasizes there the importance of uh, dissolving the glamour of uh, fear of death. And uh, in one of the chapters he says that it's that fear of death that's been controlling humanity till uh, like on like on a larger scale till very recently and only with the beginning of the coming of the Christian era that the first human uh, started transcending that fear of death recognizing the path back to father and uh, he says that by this time by the time when he was writing this, this book 70 years ago this movement became so massive that it's started uh, that's eventually very soon it will become defining process the process of a reorientation where the where death will be seen as a liberating experience and not as a threat to everything we know uh, in this physical world. So when I uh, think about the leadership of soul, it's that new position, it's that new perception that's holds continuity uh, of consciousness and uh, through time uh, and uh, can see in much wider terms and not to have fear of death. Thank you. Yeah, Alexander, what came to me immediately when you were talking about that was the triangle. And on it was knowledge of the self, knowledge of karma and rebirth, and knowledge of death. And like you were saying, if we can dissolve the glamours of all of that um, and bring light of truth through knowledge of all of this self, we are truly a soul. Um, having these experiences, karma being, you know, our path on the way through these experiences and death, leading us back home to, uh, you know, and liberating us. So thank you for that. That was, that was stimulating to me. So thank you.
when Alexander was, I'm coming a little late, excuse me, so I don't know what you all have been speaking of, but when Alexander was saying the many large groups have entered the path, that's something like that, and suddenly the this image came, the scale was suddenly jolted into balance. And the balance brought the power because that many more were there and brought brought everything into balance. And so one could go forward. It was uh, very powerful, actually. Thanks. I'd like to share an example of a uh, group leadership that I think was uh, soul infused that I read about this morning. Uh, there was a suit uh, in Sweden by 2000 women stating that uh, because the their country was not uh, where it needed to be with climate change, that it was affecting the health of the citizens and their health specifically. And one of the tenants uh, within uh, the government in Sweden is that it is there to support and protect the people. And this suit was taken to the highest court in Europe. And the women, 2,000 women, were found um, to, in fact, win the suit. And it said that this now, um, as a suit brought forth uh, by the citizens of a country against their country for not protecting them and taking the steps that it needed uh, to for climate action was a precedent that would be looked at by many countries in the world and that there would be other suits coming. So here was a group of women and it said that many of them were in their 70s, 2000 women together taking on group leadership and bringing this up uh, as a concerned group uh, to basically stand in their own power uh, and look at their country who is uh, saying that its role is to support and protect its citizens and saying that they were not being protected. So I think this is the first time that you start to see groups mobilizing and standing in their own power of leadership rather than um, taking that passive role and being subject to the whims of uh, big corporations, big governments, and so on. So anyway, this is going to be quite changing. And I think you start to see this in many ways all over when you look closely, uh, because these are goals that I hold when I'm uh, working with the UN goals you start to see that things are changing, but this was a big one and uh, this against the country of Sweden. So thank you. Yes, I'd seen that uh, today, Judy. Um, and we, on a much smaller scale, have a similar thing happening here with a group of people in a Suffolk, one of our counties, so not a big area. They're rising up against the government uh, because the government are not uh, providing dentistry on the national health efficiently anymore. And many people just can't get their teeth seen to, which seems not too bad until you think of the consequences that tooth, tooth trouble can have. And on the sub, uh, subject of fear, which I think has to be overcome for things to move forward in the right way, um, on the eclipse, I saw an interesting uh, view today because when people initially saw it in the olden days, they must have been absolutely terrified, not realising what was happening. 
and thinking that that was it. But it could be a cosmic sign sent to humanity to let them know that after darkness, there's always light. So that can work in every area. Uh, hi, Karate Gelfman, Brooklyn, New York. Um, it's just really, uh, I'm repeating myself, it's a very deep. Um, subject. Because when we come to the understanding of the balance, and um, I'm sure we could move deeper into the works of Avatar of the Equilibrium. Tibetan says once that, you know, we uh, achieve, as humanity achieve the point of balance in the Lemurian age. And so now our goal is a dynamic balance. The point of constant movement and to me the balance is very much both horizontal and vertical and the power in that is through moving the power of balance is capacity to move it's like when you ride a bike <laughs> you can apply the power and through balance you can actually propel And also, I think it is very important to understand the color opposites of the soul, not of not, not of the soul, through the soul energy. Through the energy of the soul, you see the opposites as really two different expressions of one energy. And the soul allows us to connect with monadic uh consciousness and see that this is whole really expressed through different means and the separation is really only the mean of understanding because we live in a dual world and uh, this duality is educational for us until the moment when the duality becomes oriented higher. And I think the presence of the soul in the world, the energy of the soul is, first of all, this loving acceptance. Acceptance, not in the sense of agreeing, but in the sense of realizing that that is. And furthermore, deep exploration of what that is. And uh, when we do great steps and achieve great goals, that might be evolutionary beneficial, it might be evolutionary degrading. And this is the work of the soul to highlight that evolutionary death when the personality actually has the means to receive the light of the soul. When it's open to radiation. So it's to me, it's with this energy of the soul and the balance. What is the balance? The balance is when you look at the event, subject, issue, whatever it is, phenomenal, and you see that there is a highest point that. Is accessible for you. There's a low point, and you see that middle, which actually the soul is this middle form between the spirit, pure spirit, and the matter. 
and through shifting that balance, we achieve our goals. So there's a lot of pondering those questions. And thank you very much, Brigitte. It's, it's really deep and important. And thank you, everyone. Reach research. Thank you. This is Anne in Los Angeles. I just wanted to say something briefly. I have been meditating here, listening. And when I look at the first question, what is the essence of leadership of soul and how can we recognize it in the world? The word truth keeps coming to mind. And as I was sitting here in that word, thinking of that word and the truth of the soul, I started feeling a very very balancing effect. And I think when I think of truth, I think it does have a balancing effect and e an equilibrium of sorts when it is present. And when it is present in a group, it can have a balancing effect. So I just wanted to share those thoughts. Thank you. Thank you for this. If there's anyone else that would like to share, um, please feel free to do so now before we move on. Give a few minutes. Well, it's now time to formulate uh, and culminate our seed thoughts that we will be placing in our chalice today for the purpose of evocation and distribution for the common good of mankind. So let's take a few minutes in silence and we can all gather all our thoughts and uh, all of the good, rich sharing that we've had together over the last few weeks.
Now let us stay in silence, preparing for the meditation. We align our heart and soul. And from our soul, we link with the group heart, the group mind, and the group soul. Alternate vibration and love that we hold within our group now draws the presence of higher vibrational beings who are here to guide and assist the energy and thought forms we will be magnetizing. We link with the hierarchy, connecting with them through our group and the Karana, thus linking the heavens and the earth, the inner world of meaning and the subtle world of glamour. Visualize before us the glowing beauty of our chalice, which our work together feeds and fills. This golden chalice is made of numerous threads of lighted golden energy that we have provided as we have stood together in the contemplation of our lighted thoughts. And as we place our focus together here, we are influenced by the energies of areas. We know that everything has its purpose and that nothing is permanent. Always in a flux of continuous glowing chains, morphing from the inflow and outflow of energies which surround us at the time. Aries is part of the Cardinal Cross. This is the cross of God, the Father, and therefore of the incarnating monad. It is the expression of will and power as it expresses itself through the great creative process. Aries is the birthplace of divine ideas. I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule. Let's reconnect with our topic, leadership of soul, power through balance. Leadership of soul, power through balance.
We ask the hierarchy to guide and inspire us as we allow our thoughts to crystallize, grasping the essence of the purpose of our work throughout this cycle. And with love, we offer our efforts into the chalice. Each one unmuting and speaking as you are moved to. We also honor those who choose not to speak, but who silently offer their formulated seats into the chalice. After each vocalized offering, we will allow each seat to rest in silence for a while before the next one is offered. And let us now begin. Let Dwalwood be the keynote for these new beginnings. Let Brotherhood manifest. True leadership is an expression of soul in service for the common good. Let all people use discernment to know when leaders are working through soul, not personality. Um, Aries is part of the Aries Libra continuum. Um, Aries being the fiery initiative and Libra being the balance. And esoterically, it's been explained to us that 
It's the balance of personality and soul that is enabled in Libra. Um, and as Katya had said, it's the right balance that allows us to move forward. True discrimination of the real from the unreal, humanity releases the ego and allows leadership of soul, thereby manifesting the power and balance through love. May the love of the one soul radiate outwards to every member of humanity for the common good. Radiant group love and power unity in humanity. Alexander says, far with the dynamic balance of rendering to Caesar things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God. May the soul consciousness of humanity be radiated by this Aryan energy and distributed according to the goal of the soul.
power through soul and leadership through balance. Now we focus on the purpose of our work today and the seeds collected, allowing them to vibrate and resonate within the embracing light of our group vessel. We magnetize it now with the light of areas. We invoke the will to good to empower our group intention. And we lift our group chalice towards the hierarchy, offering it as group service to the plan. We turn towards humanity and offer our group service 
to support the collective evolution of humankind. We clear and complete our work today with the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. May light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ descend on earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills, the purpose the masters know and serve. Center which we call humanity. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Brigitte. Thank you, everyone. As we move forward into our next cycle, which is the cycle of Taurus and the fixed cross, we enter our theme being uh, resources and sharing. Uh, we'll be sending out an invitation to join us in our first quarter moon meeting uh, shortly, not too long from now. Um, this is when we will develop uh, our topic for the cycle of Taurus. And also, uh, if there's anyone uh, who may be interested, uh, maybe following or during the meeting uh, of the first quarter moon, or even before, um, if you're interested in possibly uh, 
vocalizing the meditation for that cycle. You can let Alexander, Brigitte, or I know. Uh, we always look forward to everybody's contribution and sharing uh, in this process. So please feel welcome. Uh, it's not too daunting in that we now have pretty much uh, set up a ritual for each uh, meditation, full moon and new moon. Uh, so basically, uh, everything's written down and you kind of have to just fill in the blanks for uh, where it pertains to the cycle and, uh, and its theme. And uh, so I just want to put that out there for anybody who might be interested. And it shouldn't take too much time of your time, but uh, it's much appreciated through our group work. I think this uh, concludes our gathering today. And I would like to end with a little closing for us all. In the center of soul and the will of God, I stand. Not shall deflect my will from his. I implement that will by love, and I turn towards the field of service. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men. Thank you all for your service today. Oh.